Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this Friday's webinar with Annika Digital. Today, I'm with our new business manager, Ange Padfield, who's going to be going through successful prospecting techniques for generating quality leads. Uh, really excited for this one. Um, if you need anything from us, just uh, write something in the chat box. And as always, handouts are in the handout section. Uh, Ange, over to you. Thanks, Gerps. Um, so my name is Ange Padfield. And I've worked at Annika for the last four years, getting on for. Um, I have been going to the Leicester Digital Live conferences each year. And I knew that um, that's where I wanted to work. So I rang Anne up, uh, the chief, chief exec of Annika, and just said, it's your lucky day. I'm giving you first refusal to give me a job. And here I am four years later. So if you can't sell yourself, what can you sell? So um, 20 years I've been in sales. Um, I've sold kitchens, sofas, gym memberships, newspaper uh, adverts, um, and digital marketing for the last 15 years. So yeah, all sorts. Um, I've just booked a holiday, so I'm going to Portugal in September, something lovely to look forward to. Um, I love to cook, especially Thai food. Um, I I'm a big supporter of Newcastle United, um, and I love my live music. Um, and I've recently moved back from Thailand, like I, I said earlier. Um, I was living in Chiang Mai for six months, um, which has got one of the largest digital nomad communities in the world. So that was fantastic. So that's me. And I do love my job because you, you're at work far too long to not enjoy it uh, in every day. So if you move on for me, Gertz. This is Annika. Uh, we've been 17 years in digital marketing, which is some feet in this trade. Um, we concentrate specifically in, uh, on e-commerce um, e commerce projects. We will work on lead gen as well, of course, if we think that it's a viable project, but e-commerce is our bag. And this is what we do. So it's strategy, social, search, shopping, and skills. Just grab some water. So the agenda for today, um, you're going to understand what we mean by lead generation, preparing for prospecting because um, preparation is uh, prevents poor performance, as they say. Um, there's the techniques for generating quality leads, and then the key there is quality. How to qualify leads, overcoming common challenges and conclusions. And I said before we started recording, so you're probably not going to learn anything new, but you'll get this refresher and that should refocus you to make sure that you're generating leads to the best of your ability. So the, the importance of lead generation, um, it's it, it sort of does what it says on the tin, doesn't it? You, you're generating your leads so that you can grow your business and get more sales. Um, you're in a great position when leads come to you, but it's you know, if, if you're not actually generating them, um, you're not, you're probably not going to get enough business. So you need to be hungry for leads. Um, the benefits of, of lead generation. So you've got increased conversions uh, for quality leads, cost efficiency. So you're going after unqualified leads can like waste marketing budget and sales resource as well. Um, you get if you pursue someone with a genuine interest in your offering, and even better if you interest if you're interested in their business, then it's a win-win. Um, so you get better customer relationships, improved productivity when you're getting quality leads. So you can you're not wasting your time on on leads that are just no good for your business, and then you're in, you're making your pipeline strong so that. Um, you're less stressed when you can see that you've got the strength in your pipeline and you can see that sales will come down the line. Um, so the different types of leads that you can, uh, that there are. So there's cold leads, warm leads and hot leads. And you really need to be engaging with all three types of leads. So your cold leads are like, you've got no prior engagement. You've never had interaction with them. So why would you think you could you should concentrate on those people? But you could have knowledge in their sector. Um, it's going to increase your brand awareness and you can actually get your message across to a lot of people in one, like in by automating emails, um, that kind of thing. So you're still probably best to do some sort of cold work. 
um, the warm leads. So these guys, like these, it's like yourselves. You've already engaged by attending a webinar or um, you've downloaded some content. Um, but yeah, the outreach efforts will be a lot more, um, you'll get more engagement from outreach methods when you're dealing with warm leads. Then you've got your hot leads. So they're the right time, the right place. They've got a need and they're actively seeking for the solutions and they're making a decision on purchase in the very near future. So you need to have like, um, you need to work on all those leads and you need to have like a strategy which determines what percent of your time is spent nurturing each section of cold, warm and hot. Um, and then that would flex depending on your pipeline. So if you've got happen, so I've just been to a conference, um, a, an expo last week. I'll be concentrating a lot less on my cold leads because I've got some hot leads that are ready to go. And hot leads should really be where most of your time is spent. And if you just move on to the next couple of slides there, Gurpreet. So we're going to talk about preparing for prospecting. So what you need to do in advance of prospecting is create your ideal customer profile. So you need to analyze your existing customers. So for example, for Annika, we work well um, with leads that come through marketing managers and who have uh, companies that have marketing teams. Um, they understand our language and they're hungry for knowledge and we love giving knowledge, as you'll know from the webinars you've come to. Um, our clients tend to turn over like over 5 million and that's like the sweet spot where we know that the people that we're going to be talking to can afford to pay the money that we have asked for our service. They aren't necessarily household names because household names will probably go to bigger agencies. Um, but we're looking for businesses that um, to grow our e-commerce client base. So like e-commerce and um, when we're analyzing our, our customers is like our, it, it's a, a must have um, when we're looking at our customer profile. So you need to sort of look at your customers and pick maybe your top 30% of who you've got a great relationship with. And then what you want to be doing when you're looking at your ideal customer profile is finding more people like that. And then you need to segment your, your market. So look at the industries that you want to um, that you want to target. Look at the size of the company, the geography of where these guys are. We it's surprising how many e-commerce brands are actually in the East Midlands we've found. Um, but yeah, look, think about it's, it's easier obviously to have face to face meetings when you, you have people on your doorstep. So that could be something that you want to do. Um, and then think about the behavior of the actual um, customer as well. So are they early adopters, for example? Um, and then once you've established your market, you can check that there's market potential there. So um, is there a lot of competition in that market? Is that market profitable? And is there a synergy with the kind of uh, businesses like where you're aligned as a business? And then you need to research. So conduct some market research to identify like industry trends, emerging needs, potential gaps that your product and service can fill. Um, and all this information will help you refine your ideal customer profile um, and find out what the pain points are that you can alleviate from the potential customers. And this will help you later on after you've identified your customer profile. It will help you to identify your value proposition. And then if you create a persona document, um, so you've probably seen these before where it says my ideal customer is called Gemma and then it will like give you a couple of um, a couple of bullet points of exactly what that ideal customer profile looks like. And that will focus the team so that they'll understand exactly the kind of customers that we're looking for as a business. Um, so you need to really like revisit that document and then refine it and validate it and just check that nothing's changed. So you need to be doing that probably once a quarter. Okay, if you move on to the next slide, Gurpreet. 
so then you need to create your target list. There's nothing worse than going to work in the morning and you're just thinking to yourself, oh, who should I ring or who should I contact? So you need to have a real good strategy of who you're going to target and then create that list. That list should live in like a CRM system. Um, so you've segmented your market. You know what industries you're going after. You've done your competitor analysis. You need to check out like the industry publications and um, the trade magazines and reports so that you're on top of your game to know everything there is to know about the markets that you're trying to uh, penetrate. Um, some of the best leads that you can generate will be from your current customers. So customer referrals. Um, don't be scared to keep asking for those maybe, you know, once a month. Um, and then like we've been doing lots of um online forums building communities going to networking events conferences it, in the last month i would think I've, you know every week i've been out of the business a couple of days difficult going to different networking events and conferences um and if it's the right event then they can be really beneficial and um, give you lots of lead generation Okay, so the next slide. Um, so the tools that you can use to aid you with prospecting. Um, we're, a, we're a big fan of you. Obviously, with, with being in um, digital marketing, we're a big fan and big adopters of LinkedIn. So we will reach out through Sales Navigator. Um, and we can reach out and scale through LinkedIn as well. We've used Zoom Info before, which can be quite expensive, but if you're the right size business, it is worth, it, it's great value. So that's a tool which can give you contact details um, in your target sectors um, and email addresses, etc. You can use SimilarWeb, which is a, a competitor analysis tool. We'll tell you um, what the target list that you're working on what is happening in the industry and also what's happening within the competitors of the people on your list. Um, CRM, I've always said CRM is your friend. So um, it, it'll tell, you know, basically give you what your all your activity for the day, who you're going to contact and tells you all the history of any details of when you've contacted them before. Um, so similar, like definitely CRM is something that everybody in sales should be using. And then Google Analytics, of course. So they're the tools that will help you. I'm flying through this. I think I might be done about half past, sorry. Um, I'll slow down a bit. Um, so you need to then, the last sort of stage of the preparing for prospecting is developing the value proposition. So identify your customer's pain points. Um, in marketing, what I find is when I'm getting leads, the main pain points of people who are already using different agencies and they're looking to change tends to be the same things that people say. So it's poor reporting. Um, they've not got to the expectations of what they were told in the sales pitch. Um, so the expectations haven't been managed. Pure communication, um, that's always comes up um, and then generally poor results so if we can identify the pain points of the client what we can do is we can work out what the benefits are that we need to sell to those people so we need to build that value proposition now one of the things I would say is that um, people buy people and often the people are the value in the business especially when you're selling a service rather than a product so it's always good to try and get the people that are going to be they're going to be working with, if they do take you, uh, if they do go ahead and buy off you, on the calls and in the meetings. Um, but yeah, other benefits within an agency could be the tools that you invest in, the experience of the staff, um, sector specific experience, um, and then it's really important to manage the customers' expectations so not to overpromise. Um, the fi finding what makes you unique, that's a toughie. Um, what I would say is that when you work in a service industry that's commoditized, it's, you know, 
you, everybody, all the different agencies that we work with um, and that we would deem as our competitors, they all have awards. They all uh, like have won awards. They've got like hero clients um, and they've all got the accreditations for, you know, Facebook and Meta and Google. But it's the fact, do they believe in our strategy and do they think, think they could work with those people? That is what's going to set you aside from your competition. And then use simple, concise language. So when when you create a uh, value proposition, um, it's really, really important to um, use simple language. When I was at a show last week in Birmingham, I was looking around the stands and you really couldn't tell what half of the businesses there did by reading what they had on their banners. Um, and there was a guy came to the stand and he said, being here is like, I'm going to swear, but it's like bullshit bingo. So the kind of um, jargon and the words that people were using on their stands didn't resonate with, with you as to what they're trying to sell and what they're trying to do. Um, sometimes I get a lead comes in and it, I'll go onto the website before I speak to the customer, the potential customer or the prospect. And it takes me 10 minutes to actually work out what they're doing, what, what they're trying to do. So it's really important when creating your value proposition to use simple, concise language um, and then create like that emotional connection and um, make sure that they understand what they can get out of your business um, and then test it out and refine it. I put an example on the next slide here um, of Airbnb. And um, this is their value proposition. So it, I'm not going to read it out, but it's just very, it, it it gives you an idea of how you can create a value proposition for your business. So if we move on to the next slide, please, Gerbs, I'll grab some water. So inbound lead generation techniques. Um, the, the, these are different methods that you can use. This is everything that Annika does. So content marketing, there's a question as to whether gated content or ungated content is better. Um, we don't gate our marketing, but we when we advertise like our ebooks and white papers, etc., we do require them to put in an email address to get that sometimes. So sometimes we do gate it, but as you'll know through the webinars, we're quite open in giving as much education and information to people as we can because that gives um the customers the you know they understand that we're a credible business and that we know our stuff um so then you can also like the seo side of things so that's like a never-ending um it, it's like having an accountant you don't cancel an accountant after one year um seo never ends and you have to be right on top of your game with that um, to be found in the search engines. And also it's getting a little bit harder to be, because you were having to consider things like um, being found for in search searches in chat, chat GPT as well. So that's just another uh, mountain to climb, but everybody's got to be aware of these things. Um, keep on top of your social media um, and leverage the platform. So um, get good call to actions on your social and um if, what we find as well is lead gen forms work really well because people want to stay on the platforms rather than come off them to visit your site. Um, and then we actually get, do you know what? I reckon we get probably two or three leads a month through doing our webinars. Um, and the people that are on the webinar that aren't businesses that are in our marketplace, it's still great to do these webinars because we're hoping that you learn something from us and that you're advocates for us. Um, and a lot of the students that come on our webinars as well, um, they are like our legacy clients. So we expect in two or three years time that they, they could be the marketing managers of tomorrow. So it's always great from a brand, brand awareness perspective, but also good uh, for inbound lead generation as well. So moving on to the outbound lead generation techniques. Um, cold calling are so old fashioned, but 
do you know it really does work when you do cold call um you need to grab the person's attention within the first few seconds so i use a um acronym called cab which is your credentials appreciating something about that business that you're calling and then uh, the benefits of why they should listen to you um so that's my tip um the cab um email outreach um so emails shouldn't be too long they should be personalized um and again you should use that cab so um in an email to tell them who you are why they should listen to you and um what you could do for their business um i went to a networking um lunch yesterday like i said earlier um in nottingham and i'd say we go to networking um probably three or four times a month with that it's not you're never going to come away from networking with like a lead in your pocket it's rare anyway but you've got to continue doing that work networking to build those relationships because um in the end you probably will get leads from that um and it's always helps if you can um give business to the people that you're networking with first because there's a famous phrase which is give as gain so if you can give the likelihood is that you'll get back and then the good old fashioned direct mail um it it doesn't happen much anymore which is why it does stand out so it is worth perhaps looking at whether that would suit your business um as a strategy um we've just started um something brand new at Annika which is good with, with really on the very cusp of starting it well called guerrilla marketing which is where we want to um do something which really shouts to a client and gets their attention that we want to work with and so we're thinking we haven't done it yet but we're thinking of like sending an ice cream van up to one of our target prospects and buying ice cream but the thing is the weather's not too good at the minute so we've got to wait for a sunny day so that they really appreciate it and then LinkedIn, of course, that that services um, inbound and outbound lead generation. So the next slide is about qualifying those leads. Now, further on in the deck, we talk about objections, and if you do this part correctly, you're going to get very a lot fewer objections um, when it comes to the end when you're asking for the business. So this part is really quite crucial. So you need to check that the person that you're speaking to, at whatever prospect it is, has the budget, the authority to make a decision, and they have got a pain point, a challenge or a need that needs um, a solution. Um, and then you need a document. We have a discovery document, which has got every question we could think of that is important to be able to work out what that customer needs to be able to give them that solution. So we're asking them about their goals, their plans, their challenges, um, their average order values, their profit margins. We need to make sure that if we're gonna run a project that it's a viable project for the customer and that they're gonna be able to get a return on investment, get value out of that project and they're gonna be able to build their business. If we aren't, um sure at discovery stage that that's the case then we will actually turn business away um, i did that yesterday um but it's not every lead that comes through that you need to um that is the right sort of customer for your business so um you should be a little bit picky because if you're going to be working with these people these businesses for a long period of time which is what it is it's a partnership um then you need to make sure that they're the right business for you. And you can score leads as well. I've got an example on the right here. So um, you can um, score leads out of 100. You can have some sort of strategy so that you know when those leads are like really hot. So overcoming challenges. So dealing with rejection. I would say that you're actually learning um, so much from rejection so every time I finish a call where I pitched I've got to think to myself now what could I have done better if I've lost business I, I always think that if I can find out and get feedback off the prospect as to why we've lost that business 
then it's going to make me a better salesperson for the next call that I'm on. Um, it could be something in the deck. It, we could have missed the brief, but we're not going to get 100% sales. So as a salesperson, you really do have to learn to deal with rejection and see it as a positive. Um, the other thing is with rejection, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a no, not ever. It just means no, not now. So you should always still keep um, keep that customer alive in your CRM and have a follow-up call planned in for them. Um, so let them know that you are going to keep in touch as well so they do expect your call. So it's not a surprise when you all of a sudden ring them out the blue. And also to deal with rejection, what I find is good is to like diversify my day so that I'm contacting maybe cold leads part of the day, hot leads other parts of the day, because you're going to get a different, you're not going to get as much rejection so that you, um, so you've got some hot leads to go out on a daily basis. Um, and then there's handling objections. And that's what I was talking about earlier with getting that leads, those leads qualified so that you have less objections come up that's always best practice but you will have times where like the goalposts move so there may have been budget cuts or priorities have changed um so it's just um different ways of handling different objections so for example like budget is a big one um so you need to go back through the value of if they say oh you know it's a bit expensive or that that's more than we expected, then you need to go back to the value that you, they haven't understood the value of the proposition that you've put forward. So you need to explain to that cost uh, prospect um, how they're going to achieve, achieve a return on the investment um, and then revisit their objection and see if they have understood that the value. Um, the need, so... Um, yeah, so it may be that they have the need then, but um, the needs have changed. So that could be an objection that comes up. Um, the timing may be wrong, but then that's just a question of finding out when would be a better time and then revisiting that prospect at that point. Competition is like when you lose business to competition, it's always good to find out why they won the business and you didn't so that you can... Um, improve for the following time like we say but it's still worth checking in with them in a couple of months to see if the co the com company that they did go to has managed their expectations given them the communication um that they expected and then finally um the time management aspect of things so we're all sort of juggling everything um every day CRM will help with this. I'm a big one for writing lists. Um, I always mark my lists after I've written them. Like if it's 10 things on the list, I'll mark them one to 10. I use my highlighter pen loads. This is just the sort of old fashioned way I work. But another thing just to uh, mention with time management is that if you were like a morning person, then it's good to get the meetings with the prospects in the diary in the mornings rather than in the afternoons. Or it could be that you're an, uh, you're not so great in the morning and your mood's better in the afternoon. Um, so you might um, put those meetings in the afternoon. But that depends on you personally. But it is a good way to, um, to arrange your diary. And then in conclusion, what you need to sort of refocus on and make sure that you're doing as a business is defining your ideal customer profile. You need to build your target lists out, make sure they're all in your CRM, develop your value proposition, test it out on your clients, see if it fits, um, revisit that regularly, implement lead scoring, um, make sure that you get those leads qualified properly, and then just stay up to date like you have today by joining us on this webinar with continuous learning and, and find out what's new in sales. There's um, so many tools that you can use in different webinars you can go on. And yeah, that's that's me. I don't know whether there's been any questions in the chat at all, GURPS, or... That was brilliant, Ange. Thank you so much for the, for the tips and tricks there. Um, got a few learners uh asking a couple of questions um i'll try and turn our 